Thank you for the song. Well, it's been a blessing coming through a great meeting like the Faithful Men's Meeting. And I'd ask this morning you take your Bible with me. Let's turn to the book of Acts. The book of Acts in chapter number 6. That's one of the blessings of being at a place like Crown College and Temple Baptist Church. We get to hear great preaching. We hear great men of God come through. And I can think back on meetings when I was here as a student. Messages I heard that spoke specifically to me gave me things I needed. I once heard an old preacher say one time that a man came to him and said, Sir, why do you keep going to church? You've heard so much preaching in your life. I don't know why you keep going back to hear more. You probably can't even remember all the sermons you've ever heard. And that old preacher said, I looked that man in the face, and I said, Sir, I can't remember all the meals I've ever eaten in my life either. But I knew every time I sat down at the table and I ate, I got something that I needed. I got the nourishment I needed. And though I don't remember all the meals I've ever eaten, I knew I needed every one when it came in its time. And though we may not remember all the preaching, there may be something specific. There may be something very needed at a time that we received. We got the nourishment we needed. We got exactly what the Lord wanted us to have at that moment so we can move forward and go on for Him. So here in Acts chapter 6, I want us to begin. We're coming kind of off the heels of this faithful men's meeting. I want us to look at the life of a faithful man. The faithful man here that we'll look at is a man by the name of Philip. Really a man that we don't, maybe is not a real mountain peak of New Testament uh, personalities. Maybe he's not on the status of a Peter or a Paul or a John. We find here a faithful man. The great thing about Philip is we find him all through Scripture taking the next step for God, going further with God. Our pastors really made that emphasis this week. Going further with God. And I want us to begin looking at Philip here. We pick up in Acts chapter 6. Let's begin reading in verse number 3. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will deliver ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Procurus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. So we find here Philip is mentioned in this list of men. Now, the church at Jerusalem is expanding. With people come problems, all right? There's a dispute among the Grecians and the Hebrews. They say, we need someone to help take care of the widows. We need someone to help serve tables. That's here in verse number two. They said, let us not leave, that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. It's kind of like the faithful men's banquet, all right? Serving the tables, okay? They say, we need somebody to serve tables. So what do they do? They call out a number of men here in verse five, and they say, these men will be deacons in this church, and there's a work that they need to carry out. Now, we don't really find Philip stands out. The first one is Stephen. It actually says, Stephen, a man full of faith of the Holy Ghost. Oh, and there's Philip and these other men with names we really can't pronounce that well. So he really doesn't stand out much. But what does he do? Obeys the Lord, takes the next step for God, and begins serving this local New Testament church. Serving as a deacon. So if you're taking notes, you can write this down. Number one, he is serving in Jerusalem. Now, that was just the beginning. That's not the end for Philip. We continue on. What is his next step? Now, think about what have you gotten from this meeting? What have you gained? What is the next step? I want us to look at the next time that we find Philip. It's an amazing passage. We go to Acts chapter number 8. In Acts chapter number 8, we'll pick up reading in verse number 4. Now, we find there has been some persecution that's begun coming. The Christians are being dispersed. And we find here in Acts chapter 8 and verse number 4, it says, Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip, there's our Philip, our faithful man, he went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. So there's really a concentration of Christians right now in the city of Jerusalem. Now persecution has come and many of them, except the apostles, they begin to disperse. And because of this, Philip, led of the Holy Spirit, I believe, goes down to Samaria. Now he went down from Jerusalem, but he goes north on the map. He goes up to Samaria, which is a direct fulfillment of Acts chapter 1 and verse number 8. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. Now the thing about Samaria is 
Nobody wanted to go to Samaria. We don't even find the apostles have gone to Samaria. These are the lowly people. These are the mixed race. They act a little different than we do. They live a little different than we do. They're not quite like us. Nobody's gone to Samaria. But Philip, a faithful man, understands the next step that he needs to take for the Lord to go further with God is to go to Samaria. And the Lord, thankfully, wonderfully blesses his act of obedience. It says he preached Christ unto them, verse 6 of Acts 8. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did, for unclean spirits, crying with loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies that were lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. So we find here, he goes down, he begins preaching, people start getting saved, people start getting healed, great things begin happening. So then what? Well, the apostles in Jerusalem begin to take note. So what do they do? They decide, verse number 12, it says, And when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also. This was a sorcerer that had come to the meetings and started hearing. He gets saved. He was baptized, continued with Philip. Then in verse 14, Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John. So just lowly Philip goes down and begins preaching here in Samaria. People getting saved, people being healed, great things going on for the Lord. Then the apostles take note and they said, oh, well, you know what? We need to send the big guns down. We need to send Peter and John down there so they can really hear some good preaching. But the Lord was already at work, working through the deacon Philip. He's not an apostle. He comes in just a list of deacons, but God is working through him. First, Philip was serving in Jerusalem. Then we find him preaching in Samaria. You see, that wasn't the first work that he ever did there, there in that preaching. The first work he did was the serving tables and the taking care of the widows. Then the Lord sends him down to Samaria, and we see a great meeting break out, a great revival breaks out. Souls being saved, people being encouraged, the apostles take note, send down Peter and John. Wonderful, great, that's their big meeting, all right? Let's call it their faithful men's meeting. They had heard great truths. I'm sure Philip even had heard the apostles preach and he was encouraged and he began preaching even more boldly for the Lord, reaching more people for the Lord. So what have we heard this week in our big meeting? All right, the big meeting in Samaria, but now how has the Lord worked in each and every one of our lives in our big meeting? Our pastor made the great emphasis. It was, he said, look, the preachers are not bringing the meeting with them. It's a great meeting if the Lord does a work in our own personal life. We've heard great messages about integrity, about going further with God, about the need for the local New Testament church, about boundaries, about having the Spirit of God upon us. All great truths. I tell you, I was encouraged just to stand up here, lead the congregational singing, have that men's choir singing behind me. That was a great blessing to me. To hear the Crown College choir singing in the mornings did a wonderful job. This was, a, this was a big thing going on in Samaria. So he serves in Jerusalem. He preaches in Samaria. Now, can you imagine coming off that high? If we actually go all the way down to, if you go with me in Acts chapter 8, and then go with me to verse number. Go with me to verse number. 25, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. So the big meeting ends in Samaria and they all go back to Jerusalem. Woo, that was a great meeting. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord. It's wonderful. Here's, here's what happened in my life. Now you've got to grow in Samaria before you can go further with the Lord. So now where is God going to take Philip? Let's continue reading in verse 26 of Acts chapter 8. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. So he serves in Jerusalem. He preaches in Samaria. Then he's going to go down to Gaza. Gaza's not a big city. Some great meeting's not going to break out down there because there's nobody down there. What is Gaza? What did the verse tell us Gaza is? It's a desert. 
surely, surely Philip's not going to go down to a lowly place like a desert. He's just preached a great revival in Samaria and seen these great works being done. But he's got, he had to grow in Samaria before he could go to Gaza. I don't believe he was ready to go to Gaza before he went to Samaria. I don't believe he was ready to go to Samaria before he served in Jerusalem. The Lord had to do a work in his heart to get him ready for what he had. So the Lord says, I want you to, I want you to leave Samaria, great revival, all that's going on, go down to the desert. Surely Philip thought, Lord, really? There are great things I could do. I am just now getting to where I feel like I, I, I can preach and tell people about the Lord. No, I want you to go down to the desert. So Philip, the faithful man, what does he do? Verse number 27, and he arose and went. We don't find any delay between verse 26 and 27. He arose and went. At the bidding of the Holy Spirit, immediately he's there. And he follows the Lord. He's serving. He's preaching. Now he's going. And I can't imagine. Now he's left Jerusalem. He's going all the way down. Gaza was way down in the south. Way down in a desert area. He's walking. And I can imagine as he walks, he doesn't see anybody. There's no towns. There are no shopping areas. There's no Walmart. There's no drive through McDonald's. There's nothing. I mean, just he's on his way. The Lord told me to come down here. I don't exactly know where I'm going or exactly who I'm going to meet, exactly who I'm going to talk to. And maybe just over the horizon, he can see a little caravan. And he keeps walking and he goes up. And what does he find here in Acts chapter 8? Look with me, please. In verse number 27, he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and who had come to Jerusalem for to worship. Now we find, it's very interesting, we find really the treasure of the nation of Ethiopia. He's, hearing, he's heading here through the desert, and he's just come from Jerusalem. Now, could the Lord have worked it out for Philip, who was just in Jerusalem, to meet the Ethiopian eunuch in Jerusalem? Well, no, the Lord wanted him to meet him in Gaza. Why? Because I believe the Lord wanted to see that he would obey him, follow through with him, and go all the way down to Gaza to meet this specific man. Could it be the Lord's brought you through a time in Samaria, a time of a big meeting, to take the next step with him, which may be going out in the middle of the desert, to reach one person. The Christian life is not going from big meeting to big meeting. The Christian life really is about a daily walk with Jesus Christ. The Christian life is a lot of desert places to come to one person, to talk to them about the Lord, reach them for Jesus Christ. Now that doesn't mean that there's an emptiness in the Christian life. It's a life of following after the Lord and Him sustaining us and giving us the provision we need. But He has gotten Philip ready through all these things. It's a wonderful story. We won't go into much detail with how he works in this Ethiopian eunuch's life. But after the Samaria experience, he takes him into the desert. We find in verse 28, it says that he was returning and in his chariot read Isaiah the prophet. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to his chariot. And what do we find? If you go all the way down to verse 35, Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. If you notice in verse 35, it says he preached unto him Jesus. If you go all the way back to chapter 8 and verse number 12 when he was back in Samaria, what was he doing? It says he was preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ. The message didn't change whether he was preaching the revival in Samaria or whether he was going to one man in the middle of a desert from a foreign nation. He preached unto him Jesus Christ. The Lord had given him this message and he's carrying it now. So he serves in Jerusalem. He preaches in Samaria. He's going to Gaza. Then we find this Ethiopian eunuch comes to know the Lord. It says in verse 39, when they were come out of the water... The Ethiopian eunuchs baptized. The Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. There's a, some spiritual work here where Philip is caught away and he's no longer there in the Ethiopian eunuch's presence. And he actually sends him up to Azotus in verse 40. Philip was found at Azotus. That's the city we know as Ashdod. 
And passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. So he's preaching this Ethiopian eunuch, baptizes him. The Lord whisks him away, takes him to several other Gentile cities. He works his way up the coast till he ends in a city called Caesarea. And then we don't hear much about Philip for a while, this faithful man. It's actually not for about 20 more years do we hear anything about this man, Philip. Will you go all the way with me to Acts chapter 21? Paul is in a little city called Caesarea. Seaport town, Gentile city. Really a place the Jews wanted to stay away from because there was such Roman influence in that city. But there's a faithful man there. By this time he's begun raising a family, setting up his home, teaching his children. We find in Acts chapter 21, we find here in verse number 8, the Bible says, And the next day we that were of Paul's company departed and came unto Caesarea, and we entered into the house of Philip the Evangelist. There's our faithful man. One of the seven, and abode with him. We find, first of all, Philip was serving in Jerusalem. He's preaching in Samaria. He's going to Gaza, and then he's staying in Caesarea. What does this faithful man do? He is found faithful in the place that God has set him. God takes him to Caesarea, really a, a, for, a forgotten land as far as the Jews are concerned, not really, not really wanting anything to do with Caesarea. But Paul's passing through there one day, and he goes to the house of Philip the Evangelist. He's still preaching. He's still going out planting churches. He's still reaching people. All these things are found true in his heart and life because he was faithful to the work God given him to do, and he went further with God. Now, before he went to Caesarea, I don't think he could have started Caesarea. I believe he had to go through Gaza first before he got to Caesarea. And before he could go to Gaza, I believe he had to go through Samaria. And before he went through Samaria, I believe he needed to go through training there in Jerusalem. The Lord had a work for him to do. But when we look back at this great meeting that went on in Samaria in his heart and life that the Lord used him to do, where do you go from there? Where do you go after you come through a great faithful men's meeting like this? You just take the next step with God. Whether it's into the desert, whether it's into Gaza, wherever that may be. You know what? We had a great meeting Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then some of you, you know what you had to do? You had to get up early Thursday morning and go to Bible club. Maybe that's your Gaza. Maybe that's your desert. I don't know. That's a great opportunity. But it's taking the next step with God all the way. And listen, you, have, you and I have a short window to make sure we act upon what the Lord has given us to do. Time is the hardening agent of the heart. We saw no delay when the Holy Spirit spoke to Philip and told him where to go and what to do. The same is true for you and I. The Lord has spoken to us about something specific through this meeting. He's talked about something in particular. Let us not let it pass us by. Let it not let us just go to the wayside. Let us move forward. Take the next step. Be ready to do what the Lord has for us. As he may be leading us from Jerusalem to Samaria, Samaria to Gaza, Gaza into Caesarea, and be found a faithful man and a faithful woman all the way through, all the way to the end. Let's pray.